pick the wrong weight and quit sniffing glue. Hey everybody, welcome back. It is week three, the final week on Eagle 2. Uh, we're down to the short rows, as the farmers say. And uh, I think the best course of action at this point is just to tackle things as subsections because one of the one of the saving graces of the eagle i mean one of its selling features one of its very raisons d'etre is that it is a modular construction it is meant to have interchangeable pods uh it is meant to you know the head could pop off and do its own missions uh, you could swap out engine bells things like that uh, so what i'm going to do and i think it's going to be easier and check me if I'm wrong on this, the uh, it, the shoulder pallet pods here that you can remove, um, there's not really any, the, the, the fit is so tight on this, that there's not really any uh, crying need to uh, glue these in permanently. If you want to be able to remove them for transport of your kit, if you're taking your kit to a show and you want to pack it separately, uh, it, it's very easy to uh, insert these later. Good morning, Mr. Compressor. Um, and, uh, and you know, pop it into a box. You could, you could create it up a lot easier that way. But it's, a, it's built to be modular, so why not take advantage of that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pods off, shoulder pods off, and uh, finish them as individual units makes them easier to work on it that way when you're not trying to juggle the whole ship just to uh, just to put on the landing gear. So I'm going to make those individual pieces. I mean, Lord knows the booster pack is designed to be an additional piece. So I'm going to, uh, this is ready for decals. This is all done and ready for decaling. So we're going to be uh, playing with lots of checkered stripes on that one. And um, the lab pod needs its uh, finishing touches and its decals as well. But uh, we're going to be breaking this down and working on it in various parts. And one of the things we need to do is take the, take the uh, uh, cockpit off and glue this in. Glue the, the back wall in. But I first, before I do that, I want to uh, put the decals on that need to go on this part before we uh, glue it into the rest of that. Uh, so let, let's just catch you up with what I've done today. I've masked off and painted these black uh, uh, details. And I'm going to pull the masks off from around them. Let me go ahead and do that now. I still have the masking over the, uh, over the crosses here and over the um, attachments where the landing gear goes. So I need to take those off and give everything a final uh, uh, satin coating before I put the decals on. Because these have a little weird, uh, they used to be the old chart pack and electroset uh, rub-on transfers that uh, have been recreated as decals. And I think because of uh, the peculiar nature of where they need to go and all of that, it would just be easier to put these on separately and then attach them to the ship. So we've got that, we've got a whole bunch of decals that need to wrap around girder work. So that's going to make that easier if we take the lab pod out and work on this separately because, like I said, we've got to wrap decals around some of these uh, girders. So we'll set this over here and uh, put that over there. And then by the end of the day, hopefully all this will come back together. Okay, I think one of the first things I want to do this morning is go ahead and put these uh, landing engines, these thrusters on the bottom of the uh, framework so that it has something to sit on so that it's not sitting on the white framework. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the last whitening pass done on these shoulder pods. I wanted to go in and kind of break up some of these bigger shapes with a, with a white pass. So now that this is done, but before it's time to put the decals on, I want to go ahead and um, unveil or take off the masks on these crosses and on the landing gear pads. Maybe do that one first. So that I can get a, uh, 
clear coat over all of this. Once it's been clear coated, I can decal it. And then after it's been decaled, but before I flat coat on top of the decals, that's when I want to put the, the landing gear in and uh, do the last bit of construction. And you can see how clean of a black shape you're getting because these have been masked all along. One thing I try to avoid whenever possible is to spray any sort of clear coat over the vinyl. I have found that it will make the vinyl gooey. It will leave a, it will cause it to melt a little bit, leave a little bit of residue, which is not good. Um, cuz then you have to end up stuck with trying to clean up the the gooey residue. That's nobody's friend. Trying to get a trying to get a sharp knife under a tiny there you go. Okay, just get it up and then peel it back ever so much. There you go. And uh, I'm sure I've said this before, but I'll say it again. The reason I prefer to paint these rather than use the decals is uh, the, the paint takes weathering so much better, so much more naturally than the decals do. Especially if the decal is this big. Now you can get away with um, weathering over you know a tiny bit of text or something. But if it's a big flat area of one color, uh, you're always better off just painting that color than to take a uh, than to take a decal for it. There you go. See, there you go. This is one complete unmasked shoulder pod. Welcome back, kids. It's Tuesday. It's decal day. Uh, yes, rise and shine, campers. It's decal day. Uh, we are going to be doing that most favorite of things. You know how much I love a good decal. And we're going to uh, also be finishing up the tiny bits of construction that we've got left to do. Uh, such as putting this plate in the front of the eagle. But no sense doing that until I've got the decal on it. And can uh, spray it with a flat coat. Also have to, de well, I have to decal everything. So we'll just go over this bit by bit. Uh, I think the easiest way is to tackle it sectionally, and uh, I think what I'd like to do, what's going to give me the most bang for my buck today, is I'm going to start with the boosters, because it's going to be a good primer for how to go over these big decals that need to go on the engines and all that kind of stuff, wrap around uh, decals and whatnots. Um, there are overly complicated decals that go on these tiny pipes. I don't think I'll be doing those. I'll be doing the main big decals. And uh, round two, never one for passing up an opportunity to, uh, um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, use their box as a cheap way of doing their color painting guides and their, and their uh, decal guides have put the decal guide on the bottom of the box. So this is why I am uh, uh, keeping the box around because that's where you don't have the little sheet of decals, you got the bottom of the box. I just realized that maybe my tank here is a little bit too bright orange and not and not the same color orange that is on um, well it's actually closer to that actual picture than it is this painting the painting has it a lot more yellow but the actual photo shows it more orange so we're gonna go with that um, let's start with these big ones on the top so uh, all we need to do is get the accoutrements out. I got a paper towel, got a uh, bowl of warm water, got some, got some uh, generic Q-tips. They would probably be uh, R-tips if they are not Q-tips. And we'll see what else do I need. I need my little jar O sulfur set because we are wrapping things around tubes and whatnot. We want them to lay flat. We've got particularly on these. Um, bigger tanks we've got all kinds of multiple layers of uh, plating that we would like our decals to lay over so let's start with that shall we so I am starting with the uh, the booster pack like I said and um, the decals are going on marvelously I am noticing one thing that's a difference however and that is some of the decals are upside down I mean they're at least they're upside down according to the number, if you go by the number and you read the number right side up, and then you look at the design, uh, how it is specified to go on the kit, 
it is the upside down version of that so uh, I don't know whether that was a, a miscommunication because some of these are so many of these are completely symmetrical but I noticed on these particular 19 and 20 and 3 that uh, they have it in a way that uh, is upside down from how it looks on the decal sheet if you read the numbers correctly so I guess it's a, all a, a matter of your own personal choice and you should just do it however you want to do it okay this next bit typifies the exact thing I love about uh, physical model making and uh, the people who made filming models and the people who who make the models of the filming models that we see that like to carry over tiny details uh, I don't know whether you can read this on the uh, uh, camera or not but there in tiny letters it spells out can you fandango c-a-n-u-f-a-n-d-a-n-g-o can you fandango and that goes on here now I don't know whether that is a uh, inside joke at round two or whether that's an inside joke that starts in Brian Johnson's model uh, shop in London but I love it and the one on the back is gotta mooch gotta mooch is on the 13s and can you fandango is on the 14s back I hope you will forgive me I had to avail myself of a rare opportunity to mow the backyard not that it will be the only opportunity this year but I had a break in the weather then I looked at the re upcoming forecast and this looked like it was going to be the best time in the foreseeable to take care of that so uh, some things you just got to do when you got to do them so uh, what I'm doing now I needed actually I needed to take a break from this because I was starting to uh, step over myself with wet decals and you know you pick up some you have to pick up an area to put a decal on it and you end up bumping another decal and that's that's nobody's idea of a good time so uh, it was a good a time as any to take a break so I am back at it now seeing how some of these have settled down and they look pretty good I gotta say they look pretty good uh, of course they'll look better when I get a flat coat over the whole thing that would make the uh, um, make the carrier film disappear but uh, right now everything's looking pretty fine and dandy so let's go on with the uh, orange stripes I am not doing uh, what the instructions say surprise surprise as far as using them in a bunch because it they're asking it they're, they're asking you to make a flat decal bend over t a complex curve in two different directions which uh, I have never been able to figure out how to do without cutting a bunch of reliefs in it so I'm just cutting them apart and putting the elements on one at a time and I think that's gonna work easy work uh, a little bit easier for me so uh, let's see, I need to bend this one around a pipe and then get it to wrap around the underside of the pipe. Surface tension is a marvelous thing because that's really all that you've got going in your favor. So if you can wrap that around and then let the, uh, the decal cling back to itself, that's about the only way around. See, most times you don't want decals to fold back on themselves, but this instance you actually do because you want it to wrap around and hit the other side. So there you go. Um, let's get this last one on. And I did have to go through with the uh, an X-Acto blade and trim off the carrier film on either side of the stripe because the narrower that is the easier it is going to be for it to wrap around that pipe see this pipe right here I need to get that to wrap around it so the narrower I can make that the better off we all are 
then that will finish the booster pack and then I think the next thing I want to do is the decals that go inside the uh, cabin so that I can get that glued on to the front of that and for that I need this equal to marker for the door I think that's the only one now there are a couple of very tiny decals that go on the pilots that I need to cut out I'm not using the uh, seat belt that, uh, that are printed on the sheet sorry under the camera but there are a couple of the uh, badges chest badges that uh, go on the you get, go on their outer jackets that I need to use. I may have to slice those off with an exacto just to get the tiny little. These are very much like uh, I would say the shoulder patches that they've used on uh, the Viper pilots and things like that, or the tiny Bandai decals of. Uh, the markings for Luke's helmet. Alrighty, I'm working on the uh, decal still on the engine section of the uh, the main body of the Eagle and it's not nearly as much fun as you'd imagine it to be. Uh, these long ones, actually these dotted, or these dashed lines here that go around the balls, those went down pretty easily. It's these guys, it's trying to wrap these tiny ones around these uh, uh, pipes. It's much like the ha what happened on the boosters as far as trying to get a, a uh, decal to wrap longitudinally and and getting the uh, surface tension to hold it in place there's just not enough there there there's not enough uh, surface for the uh, decal to rest on so it's a uh, it's a challenge all right I'm hoping that when they dry they will shrink up in place But we shall see what we shall see, and we will see it when it happens. And we'll see if that sticks. Okay, I don't want to do too many of these because they are tedious. And I've got all week to finish this, so I don't need to do too much today. Let's see. Um, this is a nice showy one. Let's do this one. And it's bigger, too. But it wraps. it also wraps around the pipe. But it wraps around... This one right here. So let's see how it's going to behave. All of these decals that wrap around pipes. It's got to be an easier way to do this. Oh, now that one played nicely. Look at that, kids. That one's doing exactly what it's supposed to. So the secret is to have their circumference be this large because that, oh, that just made me, that just made my day. That just went on exactly like it was supposed to. Square that one up some. There you go. Beautiful. That one went on beautiful. Let's see if there are any more large ones like this that I can go ahead and put on. Now I just said nice things about you. You better behave. Okay, before I wrap up today, I thought I would put some more of the easier decals. It didn't have to wrap around anything uh, on the top of the uh, lab pod and um, we'll continue this on into tomorrow there's plenty of plenty of them to go a lot of these don't have numbers on them they're just meant to be interspersed here and there so uh, that's all up to our artistic liberties to do it wherever you want to do it Morning kids, it's Wednesday. It is decal day two on the fabulous Eagle 2. And uh, we'll finish this up today, I'm pretty sure, barring any unforeseens. 
I've just gone ahead and popped in all of these little tiny thrusters. Oh, the little tiny thrusters. If I had to look and count up how many individual engine nozzles are on this design, it would be, it would definitely top out. I mean, you've got four big ones on the back. You've got four more ones on the bottom of the frame. You've got six more, yeah, six more on the bottom of the lab pod. You've got three, or I'm sorry, you've got four on the uh, cockpit. And then, that's not even counting, the tiny, these guys. So you've got four, eight, sixteen, uh, four, eight, five, twelve, twelve. Uh, yeah, math is not my friend. Um, and then on top of that, you add the spine booster with two more big engines. I guess they really want you to know this thing has rocket engines on it. And all they ever did was pump Freon through them. But yeah, it's uh, if you get the thrust of my conversation this morning, you will know that uh, I'm talking about all the tiny thrusters. And then you got these guys that go on the shoulders. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's more than one man could stand. So wh what I'm doing now is I'm just putting the random decals on. And I've put the ones pretty much down that have a designated spot. And all we are left with now are the randos. And that is, I mean, they're so random, they don't even have numbers on the sheets. That's how random they are. They're the old Letra set, uh, like this. This These are architectural Letra set uh, uh, transfers back in the day. I mean, that's a bathtub. This is a corner sink right here. Um, yeah, they, th that's all they were. But they it made it look busy, it made it look important. The, the frustrating thing about that is uh, some of these really nice ones, like the ones they've got on the head, on the, uh, on the uh, photos here, they've got some really nice ones on the uh, cockpit that they don't provide. I'm trying to think, there's not even a way to combine several of these to make that. It's a, it's a frustration and it's a, it's, a, it's a decal tease is what it is. You know it. It's a decal tease. Nothing worse. A bunch of decal teasers. I mean, look at that. That's a nice, that's a pretty sweet bit of uh, decalery there, and there's uh, no way to do that. You don't want to build up, even building up several layers of these wouldn't get you that. So, uh, no fair, no fair round two, no fair. Okay, I've just been playing with the uh, decals for the command module, the cockpit. I think I've got a fairly good representation down. Doesn't seem to be any standardized one way or the highway type of thing to do, so uh, uh, I think I put on just enough. The only ones you have to put on really are the, the side uh, moon base alpha things, which is tough because not only is the shape that you're going on a trapezoid but you're putting a trapezoid on top of that and it's trying to hard to figure out when you've got the bloody thing level trying to pick a uh, center line is the tough thing you, you tendency is to uh, just draw an imaginary line up the uh, edge here and then center your decal on that that seems to be about the only way to do it okay we're gonna let that dry and I must remember before I flat coat this I need to put the masks back over the outside of the window so that I don't fog those up I had it off earlier I had those masks off earlier because I didn't want to leave them on there and uh, increase the possibility of the residue on the windows so I just took those off but I have to put another set down before I flat coat Okay, I think it's time to uh, throw in the towel and call it a draw. I think I've got all the decals down that I choose to put down. Uh, I don't want it to look like a wall of graffiti. Um, got I did a little bit more of the tubing stuff today. We'll see if that uh, how that dries up. It it actually dried better, or yeah, the decals dried. It dried up better than it was going down yesterday. They did seem to pucker in a little bit. So uh, those are good. I am looking around to see if there's anything more on these sheets that I really want to put down and I'm not seeing it. So I think 
we're in a good spot to let these cure all the way overnight and uh, that would mean tomorrow we can put the final flat coat on it if it uh, does not rain like it is doing again today. I am glad that I got the backyard mowed yesterday. I had a small window opportunity and I took it. So uh, uh, I'm glad that that worked out. So I'm just looking around and there's nothing really left to do except for to let this dry and to hit it with flat coat tomorrow. Good morning folks, it's Thursday. It is the gateway to the weekend. It is uh, the waning days of this uh, uh, Eagle build and trust me, it is waning outside as well. I'm looking for a break in the clouds so that I can pop out the back door very quickly and put a flat coat on all of these parts. I've got them all lined up, ready to go. I've got them decaled. The decals have dried in at least overnight, so they're good. Uh, what I want to do now is uh, flat coat this thing so that I can put it all together and then maybe do a touch of weathering on it um, to finish out the week. I know that it's only Thursday. It's been a weird week. Uh, it's Thursday and in a more just and perfect world, I would be waking up in Louisville, Kentucky at Wonderfest right now. Actually, no, Thursday. I would be uh, waking up at my friend's house and driving the last leg to Louisville. I wouldn't be there at this, at this time of the day. I would be getting in later this afternoon and uh, heading for the pool. But uh, that is not to be happening this year, at least not until October, hopefully, fingers crossed. But we do have the Want-A-Fest going on this weekend. Of course, by the time this video goes up, it might be a little late. No. Well, let me figure that out. Uh, video goes up on Friday, Saturday, still time to enjoy. Yeah, so if you still see it around, now of course, you know, if you're watching this, you know, from some time capsule in the future, uh, it will have been long gone, but such is the way of life. Okay, there's just something glorious that happens when you flat coat a model that's got decals on it. It's just amazing how the carrier film disappears and you're left with something that looks like it was painted on. I, did, I can, as many times as I do it, I can just never get over what a, what a difference that makes on your kit. So I've got parts of this flat coated. I have to run out and brave the Walmart to get another can of the, uh, of the clear flat coat. But I wanted to make sure that I got these masks off of the windows as soon as possible. I've masked them long enough, just just long enough to uh, spray the flat coat on, and now I want to quickly get them off so that they don't have an excuse to start leaving a bunch of residue on the glass. And that can happen with vinyl, particularly if you have sprayed it with a clear coat. It can make it gummy. If it makes it gummy, that makes the... Uh, uh, the adhesive want to uh, lay on the plastic so I take it off as soon as possible but look at this was something that I made up out of a couple of the decals that were left over but look at that absolutely no carrier film visible just love it Here, if I can put the camera over to where you can see it just lovely okay so I've got bits of this done uh, I've got the got the uh, lab pod done, I got the spine booster done, I got the head done. What I didn't get done is the main body or the shoulder pads. And I want to do those separately. So uh, I'll be back. I got to mask up and get to Walmart. Well guys, I'm back from Walmart. And now Walmart has changed a bit since the uh, the onset of the, uh, the COVID-19. And uh, some of it, you know, hey, I've got no problem with. Uh, you want to limit the number of people in there? That makes sense to me. You want me to wear a mask? That's only common courtesy. But here, this may be the one step where you go this far, no further. Went to get some clear, uh, uh, clear coat and they have switched from Krylon and now everything they have is Rust-Oleum. I've never used Rust-Oleum for clear. I don't know if I'm going to like it. Um, I don't make a big deal out of nothing, I know, but for years upon years, ever since I got back into modeling, I have been using Krylon 
uh, clear coats. I've been using the gloss, I've been using the satin, I've been using the flat particularly. I've got this much left in a flat can and I think I'm going to try to finish my eagle with that. I don't want to risk running two separate looks. Uh, I'll start with the next model with this uh, Rust-Oleum clear. I've used Rust-Oleum primers before and was not was not enamored with them so I, I don't know what their clear product is going to be like but oh the things we have to give up now Walmart was probably making this change this was on the books years ago I'm sure they did not need a uh, pandemic as an excuse to switch their line of, of paint but it's just the timing of it all it's just the timing of it all so let's finish up with the I'm gonna be ringing every little bit out of this can and squeezing it and petting it and patting it to get everything I need out of it but let's finish up this eagle and uh, move on to a, something else and there we have it folks got it all pieced together uh, the flat coat looks beautiful this is the last of the Krylon flat coat um, got the head on got the got the uh, uh, spine booster pack on that went on really easily but I'm afraid if I keep taking it on and off it's gonna uh, scratch up the paint so I'm gonna minimize the amount of times that happens but uh, I uh, think we've got another winner here from the good folks at round two I should put this on a uh, uh, turntable but I don't have a turntable big enough I love the way this kind of sits with the uh, the uh, landing gear they've got the lighter springs in it now that they're not quite so uh, heavy they let it sit down a lot more which is great because of the extra weight that's involved in this when it really hunkers down low on its landing gear but if you take a look once it sits it rests it, it rests down on those landing gear very nice back kids it's Friday it's the last work day of the week and uh, as I look out the window the roulette wheel of weather seems to have you know how when you spin a wheel there's that little tick 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 thingy at the top that uh, stops the wheel from uh, from spinning and it uh, it lands between one or two pegs I think that thing is just busted clean off because this weather has just been spinning and spinning forever it seems i swear today there was a time when it was raining sun shining and snowing at the same time uh it's just amazing but here we have kids we finished out our friday actually we finished this on you finished this yesterday but this week has got so much going on this weekend that i wanted to go ahead and get this video up early because it is what would have been wonderfest weekend so um, uh, there are some virtual events happening online that I need to be a part of and therefore I wanted to get this video up early but here you have the finished Eagle 2 um, a lot of things to say about this Eagle 2 kit mostly uh, come from my own idiocy and confusion um, I was comparing this to the 14 inch kit when I should have been comparing it to the uh, original Eagle one that was 22 inches as far as the parts that make up its construction um, I was saying oh look at all the different things they did well they didn't um, the spine piece or several pieces it is exactly the same spine as they had in Eagle one I was my confusion that uh, that that conflated it with the 14 inch version so I'm I apologize for that um, Outside of the new pilots, the new uh, pod, the new lab pod, um, the booster pack, which you really can't consider part of this kit since it's its own thing, uh, the, the details on the shoulder pads, and one piece back here on the engines, this uh, the new bottle configuration here it is the same kit and I, I I apologize for misdirecting you if you took any took any of that as uh, new information I'm sorry about that so where we are is 
uh, where we are is where we are well, where we are is at the end of a, a finished model and the the uh, the flat coat that I put on it yesterday has settled in it looks very nice it has uh, puckered down over all of the decals, which look like they were painted on now. Unfortunately, uh, it's also ghosted some stuff here that I wasn't expecting. I think maybe that was residue at the bottom of that flat coat can because I was trying to squeeze the last vestiges out of uh, the last Krylon can that uh, gave me, is giving me a little bit of a, a ghosted image or it's laying down like almost a, a, a dust coat on top of some of the stuff that just that is uh, not all that attractive so we're gonna leave it for now and see if it gets any worse but that's neither here nor there this is a finished eagle and I think what I need to do now is to uh, clean off the table and put down the cosmic tablecloth for lack of a better term and take some pictures of it so that I can put this one for, uh, formally in the books or former formally formally not formerly formally as in a formal thing not as a former thing uh, put this in the books as a done kit and if you look carefully in there you can see Tony and Alan grinning their little faces off um i did not put a light in here only because to do so would mean that i would have to take this head off every time i wanted to either turn it off or on and i'm not wild about having to do that Let's see there you go there are both of our pilots bright shiny all in their places with bright shiny faces I really do like the uh, improved springs on the uh, landing gear. This is the only one that's giving me a... Uh, no, see, once you set it down, it just kind of rests down and hunkers down. It's pretty neat. Um, let me see. If I had something here that I could put in here as a real quick light demo, let me get back to you. Okay, I bowed to pressure and went ahead and put some lights, a, a light, in the cockpit. That is a couple of inches of yellow strip tape that is taped up along the top edge here. And it's the little quickie switch and a battery inside. It means I do have to take the cockpit off every time I want to turn that off or on. Not the most ideal of circumstances, but... Uh, was okay with what I had on hand unless I can find a little uh, on off well obviously an on off switch a little uh, pressure switch that I can hide maybe on the bottom thruster then I can use that as the switch thought about using a magnetic switch there I just don't like them because that means you got to keep track of the magnets and all that kind of stuff so no thank you you go ladies and gents one last look at the Eagle 2 out here in the living room on the uh, on the big table with the cosmic drapery um, it's simply too big to adequately display on the workbench so while I had the table set up for other things I figured I'd go ahead and throw the cloth on there and uh, let you see the Eagle in its full glory. It's too big for the turntable that I have. There you go, that's probably the prettier shot. And into the interior there. Unfortunately, well you can see Tony there, but you can also see one of the wires so uh, I need to tack that up a little better and yes my friends that is brings us to the end of this Eagle build uh, three weeks it was maybe a little longer than I should have spent on it but I took my time plus I had a bunch of other stuff I needed to get done this is you know a very melancholy week this is the weekend that I would be in Wonderfest at uh, in Kentucky at uh, Louisville and um, 
that is not to be, so uh, at least until October. But I hope you will have enjoyed the Wantafest by now, if you haven't gone to it. Um, next week, ho hopefully, we'll get back into a more normal swing of things. And uh, we'll see what the, what the fates bring us. So until next week, you be good. You be good to each other. You look out for each other. And we'll see you here next time.